You're listening to You Radio. Let your voice be heard. My name is Ryan Funk here on You Talk, a program dedicated to diversity, highlighting native born and new Canadians, cultures, and experiences. Tatiana Burkic has an impressive resume, to say the least. She is a mentor at HEC Paris, she was a consultant at UNEP. Red River Applied Business Research and International Business Faculty, and a participant in TEDx Active. She also helped create Square Meter for Peace, an inspirer and facilitator of a grassroots movement working together for positive peace locally, nationally, and internationally. I come from an immigrant family. My grandmother was uh, a refugee after the Russian Revolution. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, then she settled down in Serbia out of all countries. And uh, it became a very turbulent area in the 90s. And uh, since my husband was Bosnian, uh, you know, the decision was made to immigrate to Canada. Uh, What uh, I would like to say about the life journey, you know, uh, it's interesting how actually the professional and personal interweave. Um, I studied engineering and uh, hated it from the bottom of my heart. So uh, my summer job was to be a tour guide around the uh, Mediterranean uh, coast, which I enjoyed far more than actually the studies of engineering. And then uh, when I got a job in Volkswagen, uh, you know, I found it uh, again. My experience there revolved around ergonomics and uh, cultural inclusion. So you do what you like to do, regardless of what actually your professional, if you want, uh, situation is. And Canada provided a phenomenal opportunities for the career development as well as professional development. Like, I believe that uh, if you are a woman coming from uh, Balkans and coming from from that area where actually the glass ceiling is uh, very low still, uh, that uh, this is like a wonderful you know, I uh, finished my MBA, I got scholarships, fellowships, uh, all kinds of accolades that I could just dream about, um, and uh, uh, got a job here in the International Institute for Sustainable Development, uh, which led me to uh, actually start doing something uh, that is uh, uh, still uh, an emerging trend. Uh, it is actually how businesses should become more sustainable. Uh, Mm -hmm. The reason why I think it's pertinent to the life journey and to the culture and integration is that I uh, reminisce of a remark that I received from the employment counselor in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. She said, you worked uh, in uh, manufacturing, you lived in different countries, uh, you are a tour guide also, and you are now studying an MBA in finance. You have to decide what you are and then focus (laughs) on only one thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't listen to that advice uh, because I think it's, it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, horrible to, to size a person uh, to, to what you would like them to fit, to the mold that you mm-hmm. would like them to feel. Uh, I think we are all uh, having different cultural backgrounds, different professional backgrounds, different personal, uh, you know, experiences. And if you can find a job that can draw on all that you actually are then you Mm -hmm. might uh, reach uh, uh, a real uh, happiness yeah rather than Mm -hmm. putting yourself into just being a slice what inspired this passion for research and uh teaching where did that all kind of stem from for yourself? The the work that I have done at Red River and uh, in part with UNEP and, uh, uh, you know, my volunteer engagements uh, are all coming from the same type of sensibility. Uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that, you know, when you change the geography, when you change the country, we have chunked up uh, the mm-hmm. planet uh, in a completely, uh, you know, um, if you want, uh, um, illogical way. Like we basically put a line and we say, like, this is mine and this is, you cannot come, yeah? And yeah. Uh, it's almost childish uh, how, how actually it works. But we have seen in this pandemic that we have done something that's really uh, crazy. We have uh, had an enemy of humanity located at one place in this planet. And then we have taken it from there and we have distributed it everywhere else solely for political reasons. So I do believe that education is the way for people to understand that we are not that different, that actually humanity, if we unite over, uh, we we all have the same goals. And I will give you the illustration. 
uh, I do an exercise with students across uh, 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 different, uh, uh, you know, fields and disciplines. Uh, where I ask them, who is your enemy? Define your enemy, as I teach about uh, security and its impact on economics. And 90% of the people have the same enemy. You know, um, uh, it's, it's interesting, it's anonymous, nobody signs their name. And uh, very rarely would I get an enemy defined in terms of religious or geographic or national characteristics. Enemy is universally somebody who is attacking me, my family, and those I love. And if we understand that through educational process, if we understand that we are facing the same challenges and that we can actually, instead of, you know, trying to combat each other in who is going to do a better job, that we can collaborate and uh, stimulate each other's intelligence and ingenuity, that, that, that can be a much happier world. You're incredibly involved in uh, social innovation. It, when it comes to business or education, what needs to be done in terms of social innovation? Well, uh, the, the whole thing, you know, of social innovation, it is actually uh, like everything else. Uh, it, it, it became a phrase that most people do not really, uh, you know, uh, know what exactly it is. So it can render itself to different kinds of interpretations. But uh, where my interest uh, has uh, gone in that area and uh, applied research and the work that I uh, have done in the past has actually focused on is uh, what is the transformational power of the communities, of the society? Because, uh, see, um, uh, you know, the, the social problems are universal. Like we all have a problem with uh, uh, loneliness, anxiety, mental illness, uh, segregation, uh, you know, discrimination, um, issues that are associating with uh, income disparity. This is a universal category. Uh, so the problem is who is going to solve them. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have tried with international organizations, we have tried with big business, we have tried with governments, and they all play a role. But where I think the solution might come from is from a small business community. Small businesses are 50% of uh, the economies in the world, most economies, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, they are the most impacted by COVID or any crisis, because they are, they are, they are like vulnerable population, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're most vulnerable. Yep. And yet they, they have the brilliance because they constantly have to adapt. They are not like mm -hmm. a big box store that actually has this box and then you have to go into an aisle where they have put a mayonnaise. The, the small business has to bring the product to you, has to figure out like Manitoba businesses today. They have to make virtual malls. They have to figure out how to find volunteers, how to redefine their, their business models. So these people mm -hmm. have the transformative power for the society, but they are completely disorganized. They are not connected around the globe. Like you, you don't have an association of a small innovators, global association, yeah. but you have a global association of retailers, you have a global association of banks, and no wonder, mm -hmm. you know, that they are actually marching like cohorts, while the small businesses, although they are the backbone of the economy, they're just, you know, really uh, yeah. uh, like, like little, little boats in the sea. Yeah, forgotten about. Almost. Exactly. So if you ask me how to transform the society, how to make a social change, I believe that we have to create the communities of small entrepreneurs, sole proprietors around the world who actually are directly living with the communities who are addressing the community needs, because we have forgotten that the business can address communities. You know, we, mm -hmm. we are actually looking into businesses as, as enemies, like because the big business is an enemy of a community, you know. Are they going to take mm -hmm. my money? Are they going to actually blackmail me to pay this uh, amount of money for the subscription for, uh, you know. My, yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, you do not see your, uh, uh, you know, ice cream store uh, in the neighborhood as your enemy. Like they are the people where you go, where you chit chat, where you are actually saying mm -hmm. how uh, you know difficult your life is. So if those kinds of uh, entities can unite, can become a force of its own, they can transform a society. And if we empower our uh, youth to start the business, uh, that would be transformative for society. Uh, then we can actually really emerge as a much better world from this crisis. When you're mm -hmm. teaching students about business or technology, 
uh, what sort of things are you telling them to look for in terms of, you know, uh, development or environmental technologies or this social innovation? Uh, that's exactly it. You know, I give them the examples of uh, uh, people uh, who have, uh, you know, with very little money achieved uh, uh, tremendous results. And uh, uh, that is uh, in hope of inspiring them to actually dream big. So what am I teaching them? Uh, you know, when I teach entrepreneurship and uh, for United Nations Environmental Program, I did exactly that. You know, I actually worked with uh, uh, social triple bottom line entrepreneurs from the developing world. And uh, uh, the idea was, you know, dream your life. Uh, what would you like to do when you wake up? Because none of mm -hmm. us wakes up and says, how am I going to take as much money from uh, people and how am I going to make as many people miserable as possible? So think about what would you like to do with your life? You know, do you like to mm -hmm. uh, create uh, art? Do you like to, to, to talk? Do you like to, uh, you know, uh, help the communities and in which way? And then think about what kind of job can you shape around it and either find a job that can provide you with that opportunity or transform the job that you already have in order to actually mm -hmm. contribute to that organization and to give the best version of yourself to that organization or start a business that would actually allow you to do that. For a newcomer who's coming in and they're wanting to start a business, what sort of things should they be thinking about and prioritizing? Uh, see, this is actually becoming a systemic issue because if you are a newcomer and you want to come uh, to Canada to start a business, you have to go through a lot of hoopla in order to actually come to a position to do that. So the idea that, uh, uh, you know, we have been working on uh, sporadically, I have to say sporadically, because it's hard to get the consistent funding for such an effort is to actually mm -hmm. uh, figure out whether there is a way to develop not a whole business, but the segment of business and to attach it to an existing business. And I will give you an example, like uh, uh, without advertising any specific business, you, you have actually uh, businesses that are complementary. And let's say that I am actually a person who is teaching English outside of Canada and I'm using mm -hmm. virtual reality to do that because yeah. that, that exists. If I have come from China and I'm a Chinese immigrant, I can come to you and I can say, okay, so what I could do, I could create a similar product that would teach Canadian kids Mandarin. So basically, I'm not going to be starting a business, but I'm going to create a cluster that would be attaching to yours. We are going to have the common marketing. We are going to have the common human resource. We are going to have the common, uh, you know, uh, accounting processes so that I can actually overcome my status. But the skill set that I have can actually be put in a good use. Because here in Winnipeg, you know, we can become a tower of bubble, you know, like we can become a place where you can teach any language. Mm -hmm. We have such a multicultural community. Indigenous languages. We have uh, the biggest software company that is actually teaching kids indigenous languages has originated from Manitoba. Manitoba has so many brilliant ideas that have started here and then went somewhere else. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, this is what I would do. I would actually advise uh, young people, immigrants, um, to try to figure out how can they attach themselves to a, uh, a resident uh, who's somebody who understands Canada and bring their knowledge to complement. So something you're incredibly passionate about is Square Meter for Peace. So what exactly is this organization and what is the significance of it during this kind of current period that we're uh, undergoing? I definitely am very proud and, uh, uh, you know, very uh, enthusiastic about it because what I have found and uh, many people have uh, actually mentioned it after me, uh, uh, much smarter and, 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 and better people than me, is that the world has polarized, that we almost have uh, uh, like a battle between good and evil, that you have on one side uh, uh, growing uh, segregation, racism, uh, you know, mm -hmm. selfishness uh, and uh, uh, self-absorption and on the other side you have a tremendous generosity and compassion and a goodwill among people yeah 
So in the early days of COVID in March and April uh, of uh, 2020, um, I found myself teaching online and uh, having a lot of students who were uh, struggling. I myself am struggling with illness uh, uh, throughout this crisis. And uh, I find that, uh, you know, we all, uh, although the government says we are all in this together, you know, uh, people who are immigrants who come from different countries, they really do not have the cushion of a family, yeah? And uh, they are somewhat less together than the rest of the people <laughs> in all this. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we created an organization called Square Meter for Peace that basically connects uh, uh, women. Uh, and I went from a gender uh, perspective, and I'll explain why, but uh, connects women from all over the world, all kinds of generations, uh, from students to CEOs, to professionals, to academics. And the idea was to share the knowledge to share the experience and to help each other. And it's a global community now of volunteers, of uh, uh, you know professionals, of doers, who are actually trying to ride this storm in some way supporting each other. Uh, why women? Uh, because uh, women are uh, nurturing, uh, you know, they are giving life, they are mothers, and it's not only for women, it's women inspired with the desire to actually say, well, let's go in this other direction, not in a Darth Vader direction, but let's go in a direction of hope, love, compassion, and try to draw from kindness, resilience. Square Meter for Peace is determined to erase borders and build positive peace for transcending race, gender, religion, and ideological affiliation to emphasize human values and global citizenship. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk, and have yourself a good one.